It's Laura Eubanks of Design for Serenity with your succulent tip of the day and this is annual maintenance in Del Mar. Many of you that follow closely will recognize this beautiful property. This client uh, is um, travels a great deal so this garden has virtually been untouched literally and figuratively for a year or a little over a year. So this is just you know, shows you how incredibly resilient and wonderful these and rubber like these plants are. But here's, I wanna walk you through and show you what we're gonna do. So, Calanchoe Lucier, uh, Exhibit A. These are monocarpic plants, and, meaning they die after they bloom. And you can usually tell a monocarpic plant because it blooms out from the center, not from an offshoot, but from the terminal bud right out of the center. What's gonna happen is these, all these leaves are going to die. So you can't save this plant. Cutting the bloom off isn't gonna extend its life. You can see here, we have a snail, the spawn of Satan. Snails love calanchoes. Uh, but the good news is here that where yes, these big beautiful plants are gonna go, but look at all the babies down here. And thank goodness, it looks like the snail was enjoying some of the older flesh. It doesn't look like the snail got after the new growth. So that's good. We will have all of these to go, um, they, these will take over and all will be well here. Plant that I love is this aloe brevifolia. It is a low growing, compact little aloe that really just doesn't have any needs, problems. It's pretty bulletproof. What we'll do here is just clean up all the detritus around it. You can see the neighbors have got a Cupaniopsis anacardioides over here and another one over there. So those trees are just dropping leaves 24 seven. The Pacopodium lamarii, this is another one that pretty much just takes care of itself. The Mangave back here, these blooms, this is it guys. I've told you, you know, before that Mangave's blooms aren't very exciting. So those blooms will be cut off and the plant will continue to uh, continue to grow and thrive. The agave ovatifolia is one of my absolute favorite specimens for a garden. Not going to be fun when that blooms because um, that is also a monocarpic plant. It will throw off a giant bloom stalk from the center at some point and then we'll have to take the whole thing out. But for now it is gorgeous. Here we have a variegated attenuata that the snails have decided that they were going to nibble on. See all of this, this is all snail. Dang, dang it. But what we'll do here is just clean up all again of the detritus and the dead leaves underneath. Our aloe cameronii, this is a bush aloe. So it gets bigger this way, it gets wider and wider. So we have a number of stands of this in this yard. We will decide which stands we're gonna dig out, cut and reset and which ones we're just gonna let go. Now remember, we are only here once a year. So I have to do some really judicious cuts from time to time, knowing that I won't be, my, my clippers won't see this garden again for another 12 months. Up right yeah, and we got, remember this job when we did the initial installation, we had a, didn't we have a mini excavator with a bucket attachment to dig out? We had hundreds of birds of paradise in this yard. And we had to actually add on an extra day of labor because it wasn't just about taking them out. It was getting all of those, all that root system so that this wouldn't happen. And I'm really pleased. I think this is the only one I see that has made a comeback. So that's good news. And we will dig down and take care of that. This, all of the sunburst aeoniums, this is an arboretum or tree aeonium. So it grows on long trunks, which aren't that cute. So these will all be yanked out, cut and reset. This is the perfect time of year if you're in San Diego or the, um, the West Coast to do this because this is a winter growing plant. Here's another mangave that needs trimmed. And it looks like we need to apply some bugetta too because snails are a thing here. Um, the Dazzlerian longissimum looks great. We will probably just limb up the bottom leaves on that, just and that's just an aesthetic thing. Uh, little, our little Straussii is Straussieying and doing fantastic. The pots, the pots are doing really well. Yeah, the pots look good. Um, 
this striata, ugh, I just, this plant, you know, these, this is what it does. It dies back underneath. And these, these leaves don't, you can't just pull them, yank them off. You have to cut them. So it's just a lot of work and it's not that exciting. So if I identify a cactus, if something's had a baby, you know, I'm, I might just take that out and put something else in there. We'll see how it goes. Um, but yes, yeah, they get no water or, or real support. And so two out of three ain't bad, right? The uh, Faquaria mcdouglii. No, this isn't a mcdouglii. This is Degouti, Degouti or Degoutii is looking great. Um, you can see that at some point it had dropped its leaves probably last winter. And now we have all of this detritus on the black lava rock. But we should be able to take the blower on a low setting and loosen a lot of that up. And it shouldn't take too long to, to clean this rock. Then the Draco, the Dracaena Draco is another one. We'll just clean off all of the bottom branches. The blue glow looks good. Here's another stand of Cameronii. Uh, looks like we had some weeds, some significant crabgrass come up in here. So we'll get in there and really work on extracting that by the roots as best we can. Here's a little rose bush making a comeback right here. We'll get that yanked out. Yeah, this, uh, this attenuata variegate looks, looks way better than the one out front. Uh, see how it's pulling for the sun? You can almost tell directionally where where the sun is just by seeing which way the plants are facing. And this big barrel cactus is very, very happy. Weird. It's like this weed is growing from the center of the barrel, Han. Mm -hmm. Look at this. I don't see I, I don't see a point of origin here. It literally is though it's growing from inside the plant. Isn't that bizarre? <laughs> That's so weird. Wow. Okay. All right. All right. So, yeah. Um, this looks pretty good. What? Yes. Yes. We, what are we talking about? Oh, the Straussy. Yeah, this is a happy one. Must get more, must, oh, I know why. This is probably getting water. Because mm -hmm. we had to irrigate for the camp, for the Cameronii, so it's take, taking benefit there. And what Kevin's doing over here is what we talked about in the front. See how he's cutting all of the Aeoniums and cleaning all of the detritus. Kind of see him, I'm gonna cut that one. And you can cut it at any length that you want. You don't have to let it harden off if you live here in San Diego, but if you live places where you get a lot of rain, then you might want to let that wound harden before you stick it back in the ground as a cutting. Um, these pots are very tragic, and I have brought new things to put in these pots. Again, they didn't, don't receive any care or water, so this stuff's all coming out, and then I brought some uh, tougher specimens to pop back in. Looks like the mite even didn't the mite didn't even survive. Anymore. Yeah, I know. This is this is aloe it's mite here, mite. but it's dead. Yeah, oh my gosh, even the mite died. That's saying something. Okay. And then the Petalanthus bracteatus, two ways to handle this plant. You can dig it all out and cut and reset, or you can just trim. And right now we decided to just trim because it wasn't that that big of a deal or that bad. So we just trimmed those up nicely. You can see this Cameronii up here is very, very red. So it's either getting a lot more sun or um, less water, which is what's making it turn so red. So this area down here, again, taking the blower, trying to get these leaves out, mm -hmm. trimming up the uh, Dazzlerian longissimum. Um, not offended by the portalacaria. Got a good haircut last time. Yeah, Hannah says it got a good haircut last time, but we will trim all of them again because we're only going to be here once a year. So the little Millii is a happy camper. That aloe vera back there looks great. We just need to um, clean up, 
clean up the detritus. I knew this coming in, which is why I didn't do a uh, um, three quarter inch rock through here. I did the big chunky lava. I knew that it would be a lot easier to get the detritus out of the chunkier rock than it would be the smaller. Just pull it out. Yeah. So back here, very, very pleased with our zero scape. This looks great. Don't need to do a darn thing except dig out some weeds, which we will do. But the cactus uh, all look good. And I will be applying systemic to these today just to ward off problems. Mostly scale tends to go after these plants. Uh, here, consider all things considered, you know, this is a very shady spot of the garden uh, but the plants are doing just fine it's fluffy and cute so happy with this then moving to the back we have our petalanthus bracteatus back here which we will also just trim so that it's very neat and tidy i think i think this is a decolate you don't think? Huh. Well, because the reason I say that isn't just because of the white shell, but if you look, there isn't any bites taken out of any of the leaves. Decolate snails eat baby regular snails. Um, so we love the decolates in the garden, and if that is indeed what it is, we want to support it. I think maybe put these out front because <laughs> you can see here there haven't been they haven't been eating the plants they're just eating baby snails so there's a lot of weeding to do in here we also need to bring in some more rock to uh, tighten up it looks like there has a, been a critter in this bed we've got remember back here it was the camellia bush there were so many camellia bushes there's another camellia making a comeback there can see here where we had a critter burrow more camellia the question is should we just let that go it's kind of pretty yeah i don't hate it i mean it's green and healthy and it's spaced beautifully between the two petalanthus yeah we might just let that ride and rudy said we can go ahead and dispose of this today that was dead when we did the installation i don't know why it's still there and again, you know, here we've got a couple more camellias that we might just let them, Alyssa. let them do their thing. And Alyssa, we're all here for that. Um, then more calanchoes that we need to yank. And look at this stand of lavender lady. How magnificent is that? So that's an option. We can separate those, and if we have gaps or holes in the in the garden after we, you know, have done some excavating and moving of things around, um, we will have lavender ladies to pop into places. The mangaves are so great and tough, and pretty much can handle anything I throw at them. We will trim back the vine off of the fence. You can see there's a lot of weeds here. This is going to take a hot minute this pulling. Stands nice. Hannah says the stand is nice, and you know she's not wrong. So it's going to fluff up after. Yeah, I think what we'll try to do here is just get after the weeds and not mess with this stand. Here's a beautiful agave and more variegated ones, and I'm so thrilled that the millie eyes are doing well in this yard. Look over here, Hannah. Yeah, whoops. Okay, so what we have here is the scientific term for this is Aeonium runamuckus. Um, these are spent Aeonium blooms. So we'll get all of these out. We'll dig all of these uh, Aeoniums up. We'll push everything back to expose more rock in the front. The trigona looks very happy. I think I'm going to go ahead and pull out all of the cotyledon. It isn't happy and it doesn't look good. And. Hannah says, am I going to leave this one? No. Uh, maybe, maybe not. But I really don't think that we're going to be missing this cotyledon out of this bed, are no. we? Not at all. And look at, look at how the little sedum is encroaching on the, on the sidewalk. Isn't that funny? These ungees are great. Yeah, the ungees are very, very happy. Um, we've got a happy Hercules here. 
and this ruticope, this aloe ruticope, this, ugh, I don't use this plant anymore because it's just kind of a hot mess. The blooms aren't that exciting. It's very prone to aloe mite. It's another one that's a little tricky to clean. And I don't know, this, this aloe, or is it an agave? I, I don't even know. I think it's an agave, yeah. yeah. I remember when we did the installation, this was here and it looked basically like that then. So this might be a great place for one of those mangave lavender ladies. And then, hey Mel, good morning. Then here we did, we did three, you know, these three pots on the pillars. So what we'll do is we will cut some pretty pieces of this uh, sticks on fire off, dig out the roots and reset the cuttings here and tighten up the pots once we can see them. Uh, oh goodness yeah looks like we got to go for here um yeah we'll just clean up i'm also going to treat systemically against aloe mite and oh this is going to be fun see how easy these come off that's just that's just fun um another stand of aeonium here that looks ratty so this one will uh, come out and be reset i don't love the way this one looks and pop some of those into this stand. So yeah, if we need it, that's right. But you can see the stand just is held together better. And then we've got this big giant mound of half dead aeonium here. This is a plant that I would say is pouting. I mean, it's not dead, but it's not thriving. So this is another area where we might want to make a change and this put yeah put something else there i think if we pull all that out though it is going to look a little empty but it, we don't need much don't need much there maybe um maybe we move the placatillus over here mm -hmm. yeah maybe we'll see then over here you know you can see we have a lot of weeds um this is looking a little crowded too this, but all these plants are really happy. So that's a tough call. Um, if I had my way, I would want to take the Kalanchoe out, but it doesn't transplant real well. It's very happy. So, but if that were out, then that would open this up nicely. Because right now I feel like these three things are very, very crowded. Uh, yeah, that's coming out. We'll try to we'll try to transplant it. You know, maybe it'll maybe it'll survive. Um, this is really cool. This aloe ferox. Check out the way these blooms are presenting. Like daggers or hot pokers. It's very cool. Okay, then over here we have more runamuckus at play. So I think. This would be, um, we'll probably want to go ahead and pull these aeoniums. There's two varieties going here. Merlot. We have the Merlot, which look great. And then we have the dinner plates that don't. So we'll pull the dinner plates out, clean that area up, and we might reset some dinner plates in here. But just that'll just open it up a bit. This plant, I think I'm going to get rid of. See how leggy and woody it is? Could I reset these pieces? I sure could, but where? You know, I don't really want to. So we'll see how it goes. But this is another area where it's gonna look better just having those gone. Same with this, this can go. Oh, pretty, look at how the jade's blooming. It's beautiful. This is very pretty. We need to get after the portalacaria, get the weeds out of the milii, and uh, deadhead the mangave, but yeah, this is very straightforward here. And then, you know, always the xeriscape. So things that just don't disappoint. Just so simple, so clean. Just lowers my blood pressure just looking at it. What kind of rock do we have here? Is this, Cali is this Cali Gold? It's yeah. Palm Springs. Or is it Palm Springs? No, I don't think it is. Crap, we need to know because daddy's gonna pick up some more rock. It might be, actually. It looks almost like a mix here. But oh dear, yeah, look at, look at all the weeds down here. Yummy. 
Ugh. And then all of these Aeoniums here, again, the, the Merlots are Magnif. Um, we need to do some edits in here. Tidy this up. And I don't know, I think this is weeds. Yeah, I think this is just all weed. So we pull that. Straighten up the bird bath. Every time. Every time. And this is this is pretty good. Um, over here, around the pool. This is sad. We'll take again. We'll take these out. We'll take this out and see what we're left with. Um, we should have a, have some cuttings of something that we can pop in there. Maybe some yellow jade or something once um, once we're done. But oh goodness gracious, we have our hands full, guys. Oh look, Daddy's here. Yay! Um, he's so handsome, isn't he? So yes, that is the intro. We are going to roll up our sleeves now and get to work. Well, another one in the books. With the help of Greg, Hannah, Mel, and Kevin, we knocked this out. I love doing seasonal maintenance. Look at this. I don't even have to say anything, do I? I mean, it's just insanely beautiful, isn't it? Just like a shiny new penny. The plants are, you know, already beautiful and they've matured. I would say this garden has doubled in size since we put it in three years ago. Uh, and so now it's just so stinking much fun to come back each year and just look at the beauty. Uh, that Deb Mediana we replaced with this gorgeous lavender lady. This plant had thrown off um, four substan or three substantial pups. So we found really good homes for those. We got all of the aeoniums reset here and we moved the attenuata back off the sidewalk. Just love how easy it is to manipulate these plants. I spent the first day in this area in here because it's the front yard and it's so important and people see it. But gosh darn it guys, this tree, it's not even cute, but what a mess. The leaves, the Capaniopsis anacardioides also throws off little seed pods. So not only do we have the leaves to deal with, but all these little pods everywhere. I did my best. I moved out all the rubble. I cleaned out from under it. I put it all back. I'm really pleased with how it looks. Same here. Just cleaned all through here. Cleaned all the mess up through here. And check this out. I cleaned up all of the petalanthus and weeded this whole area and then the guys came back through with leftover aeoniums that we took to various places in the yard and popped groupings of aeoniums in between the petalanthus. It looks so good. Oh, so happy with that. What you see, the little green things you see in the ground, that's sweet alyssum and we're going to allow that. That's pretty. But we got all the weeds and we did decide to leave the camellias because they're so not all of them i mean some of them that were in the wrong place i took care of but i left a number of them alone here's that uh, lavender lady sans pups and i mean wow right look at how tight this looks can you identify some of the changes that we made see if you guys can see some things 
we, um, look, I mean, you can, it can breathe, right? Just hold things up, move them all around. The, the pots and the sticks on fire, look at how tight that looks. So good, there's another lavender lady right here. And we took out that weird uh, of agave and put the um, Pocatillus right here, because it was really lost in the back. And it's just a beautiful specimen right there now. Very, very pleased with that. The, yes, the Kalanchoe Brachiosa. We moved it from over here, which was in between the bloom glow and the sunburst, and it was so crowded. Um, love the way that looks over there. So full. There was a bunch of aeoniums there. Those are now cuttings and over between the and Brachiosa. So incredibly funny. And the so many flowers. I cannot get over the way these blooms are presenting on these bare rocks. It's so interesting to me. And that beautiful uh, red Cameronii has got one, two, three, four, five, six blooms, seven blooms on it. And now you can see them so much better. Oh, look at all the blooms on this. It's so hard to leave. I just want to stay here and enjoy it. Look at how clean this looks. Hannah went to town back here. It's just so tight, so organized. We have so many plants in the back of the truck, just junk and crap and, and cuttings and debris. Our client said, is there anything left? He, he had been gone and he came home and he saw all the crap in the truck. And I said, you tell me. Yeah, he's really thrilled. This also tight and tight. Greg weeded all the way down there, all the way back behind the pool. We are definitely good to go for another year. I'm wishing all of you, again, happy, happy holidays. And uh, if you have the ability to get outside, if weather will permit where you live, I can't encourage you enough to get your hands in the dirt. It will absolutely change your mind. This has been Laura Eubanks of Design for Serenity reporting from Del Mar, California with our annual maintenance and your succulent tip of the day. Bye, guys.